بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from Mecca. Did you know some of the greatest enemies of Islam used to secretly enjoy listening to the Quran? For example, Abu Jahl. Who is Abu Jahl? Abu Jahl is one of the greatest enemies of the Prophet ﷺ. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ called him the Pharaoh of this Ummah. He used to torture Muslims, he used to stop them listening to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ recite the Qur'an. In fact, he was the one who killed the first two martyrs of Islam, Yasir and Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. But yet, he was secretly enjoying the Qur'an. Al-Akhnas, one of the disbelievers at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that once I was sitting outside the house of the Prophet ﷺ and I was secretly listening to the Qur'an that he was reciting while he was praying the night prayer. Now, it was in the middle of the night, so it was pitch black. He didn't expect anyone else to be watching. So when the time for Fajr came and it started getting a little bit light, he decided to go back home. So as he goes back home, he bumps into Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan. Both of them were among the leaders of the Quraysh, the disbelievers, the polytheists at that time. So each of them asks each other, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? So they told each other, I was secretly listening to the Quran. However, they realized that this would be quite difficult for their cause because on the one hand, they're telling everybody else, don't listen to this Quran, stay away from Muhammad Wasallam, and yet, they are secretly listening to the Qur'an themselves. So they each promised one another that they will never ever come back to listen to the Qur'an. So the next day, Al-Akhnas, he couldn't help it. He was addicted. So he went back to the house of the Prophet ﷺ and waited outside secretly listening to the Qur'an until once again at the dawn time, he came out and as he's walking back home, he bumps into Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan again. Once again, they promise each other that we're never going to come back to listen to the Quran. So on the third day, Al-Akhnas, he thinks that, yeah, they're not going to come. So he once again goes and secretly listens to the Quran. And once again, at the dawn time, he bumps into Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan. This time, they take an oath a serious, severe oath that they will never return, they will never come back to listen to the Qur'an. However, Al-Akhnas, he's thinking about this incident. So he goes to Abu Sufyan. He said, Oh Abu Handala, which was the nickname of Abu Sufyan. He said, Oh Abu Handala, what did you think about what, what you heard from Muhammad from what he was reciting? Abu Sufyan replied, there's some of it that I know and there's some of it I don't know. In other words, I know that this is the truth. He basically admitted that what was coming from Muhammad Wasallam was the truth. So they both went to Abu Jahl. They said, Abu Jahl, what do you think about what you heard from Muhammad Wasallam?" He indicated that of course this is true. He said, our tribe and the tribe of Banu Abdi Manaf, which was the tribe of Muhammad Wasallam. we used to compete with one another until we were neck and neck like two horses in a race. They would feed the pilgrims and then we would feed the pilgrims. They would give charity, we would give charity. They would be generous, we would be generous. And we were neck and neck like two horses in a race. And then they said, we have a prophet. So how can we compete with that? By Allah, we will never believe in him. Brothers and sisters, this person, Abu Jahl, who vowed that he would never believe in the message of Muhammad wasallam, he would never believe and accept the truth. This same person is secretly listening to and enjoying the Quran. And yet, out of arrogance, out of jealousy that Muhammad wasallam, is from a different tribe, 
He does not accept this message, the message of truth that the Prophet Muhammad came with. But the real question that we need to ask ourselves, my brothers and sisters, is how is it that this great enemy of Islam is enjoying the Quran, wants to listen to the Quran, is addicted to listening to the Quran, but yet many of us do not listen to the Quran. And when the Quran is being played, it doesn't have that powerful effect on us, making us addicted to what we're listening to, that we have to listen to it no matter what. They were disbelievers, yet they enjoyed the Quran. We are Muslims, why is it that many of us, the Quran is on the top shelf. We don't yearn to pick it up and read. What is my creator saying to me? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, Allah is talking to you and me by name, if we are truly believers. O oh, you who believe, we should yearn to know what is Allah saying from above the seven heavens. Why is it that this Quran does not have the same effect that it did on the people at the time of the Prophet Muhammad This Quran changed a people who used to bury their daughters alive to a people who honored their women folk. This Quran transformed a people who used to fight and kill one another over just a horse or a sheep that has gone from one person's land to another to a people who became closer than blood. This Quran transformed these people from people who used to drink wine in every gathering to a nation who completely gave up intoxication. How is it, my brothers and sisters, did this Quran transform these people but yet it doesn't have the same effect? on us. When we pray, we perform robotic rituals on autopilot without any meaning or focus on what we're saying. When we read the Quran, when we hear the Quran, when we hear the Imam reciting, it doesn't have that strong and powerful effect that it did on the early Muslims. Why? Why? And yet, we wonder why we are outsiders in our own religion. We're looking from the outside. We don't really understand the Quran. Brothers and sisters, the primary reason for this is that many of us don't understand what the Quran is saying. It's like I'm speaking to you in Chinese or in any language that you don't understand. If you're not Chinese, that is. You're not going to relate with what I'm saying. It's just gonna be a bunch of words that are meaningless to you. We wonder why our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so weak. We wonder why we are an outsider to this religion, not really understanding the deep and hidden meanings of what the Quran is telling us. We wonder why our situation in this worldly life is not the way we want it to be. We wonder why we don't get happiness. The simple answer is that we don't follow the prescription that is given to us in the Quran. And that is primarily because we don't even understand the language of the Quran. So the Arabic language is very often the one big thing that we need to do to completely transform our lives. So how would that impact your life? when you understand the Arabic language and when you recite the Quran, understanding the meanings of what is being recited, then your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens. And when that happens, brothers and sisters, then the affairs of your worldly life will also improve substantially. That means that when you have a strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relationships with your family, with your spouse, your parents, your children, your friends, your colleagues at work, that will improve. Likewise, your situation, your happiness, your contentment, all of this will improve when you have that relationship with the Quran. And that starts by learning the Arabic language. So the question is why? Have you not learned the Arabic language if you have not yet learned the Arabic language? What are the obstacles that you face? 
Well, we put out a survey and we sent this to tens of thousands of people. And what we got was very simple. There are two main reasons why people have not yet learnt the Arabic language. The first reason is lack of time. People are really busy. They've got work, they've got children to look after, they've got a busy schedule, they come home, they're tired, they can't go to classes, they can't enroll in a university, they can't go abroad to learn the Arabic language. And so people find it very difficult to balance what they're doing in their busy lives with learning the Arabic language. Even though you want to learn the Arabic language, you want to understand the powerful words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke from above the seven heavens to you and me, but you find it difficult in your busy schedule. The second reason why people find it difficult to learn Arabic is because of the way courses are often structured. They talk about nouns and verbs and gerunds and nominative case and accusative case and genitive case and most people they don't understand all of these in their own language, let alone trying to learn this in a different language. However, what we've come across brothers and sisters, when we've thought about this, we've realized that the best way to learn Arabic is the natural way. In fact, that's the best way to learn any other language. And in the next video, I'm going to go through the natural way. It's a powerful way where you can master Arabic even if you're really busy, even if you have a really tight schedule, even if you find it difficult to understand grammar and nouns and verbs and you know all these cases and tenses and all of that. We will make sure that you can master Arabic very quickly in your busy schedule and without going through all of the complexities that many other courses teach. Before the end of this video, what I want you to do is to scroll down and I want you to write in the comments why you want to learn the Arabic language. So right now, do it right now, I'm going to read these comments inshallah. Write down why you want to learn the Arabic language and I'm going to study this and inshallah in the next video and I don't know when you're watching this, the next video might be out already so look out for a link around this page somewhere and inshallah in the next video we're going to go through a really powerful way that you can learn the Arabic language and we call this the natural way. Even if you're busy, even if you don't want to get into the complexities of grammar, I want all of you to begin learning Arabic in a way that's easy for you and so that you can understand the Quran and begin to have a really strong and powerful relationship with Allah through His words. I'm your brother Abu Abdul Salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.